just who you want to see as president on the November ballots or maybe various contested state house races on the November ballots. Illinois voters could very well be asked three non-binding questions uh, about a variety of things, but they're non-binding. Welcome in. It's uh, Illinois in Focus Daily with America's Talking Network and the Center Square. Be sure to go to America's Talking Network and like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for daily updates with Illinois in Focus Daily. I'm Greg Bishop, and uh, you can follow me anywhere. Just search Bishop on Air. So the ballot actually won't be certified until late August. Of course, you've got the Republican National Convention next week, and we are credentialed to be on the ground with the center square at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as we do morning updates uh, before the conventions get underway. Uh, And you'll definitely want to plug in and uh, stay up to date with us at America's Talking Network each and every weekday morning for Illinois and Focus Daily. Uh, But you've also got the DNC in Chicago, and all indication is we're going to be credentialed there as well, uh, talking with some of the the key players, especially from Illinois and elsewhere. Uh, So that, again, all of the happenings with the presidential ticket, right? But then you've got objections that are uh, being raised of uh, those who are looking to be independent candidates on the presidential ballot. Uh, Also, a variety of, uh, you know, contested races throughout the states for state house seats. Uh, You've got uh, people who were slated uh, as part of uh, the process that's been laid out for this election cycle. If they didn't run in a primary, they could be slated for the November election. Uh, And you remember the the lawsuits that happened around that measure. Uh, But that measure, which passed within three days, I think the House gutted a Senate bill about DCFS, the Department of Children and Family Services. They gutted that and replaced it with an election bill. Uh, And uh, then they got it passed the House and passed the Senate within two days and the governor signed it on day three but as that measure was going through again it primarily the big controversy there was it dealt with the slating issue but it also included three non-binding referenda and while the slating issue was blocked by a district court judge in Sangamon County uh, the rest of the provision still is in place from my understanding so the judge only struck down a portion about slating but when it comes to these non-binding referenda that uh, continues forward and the legislature from time to time does this they will uh, you know ultimately bring about non-binding resolutions and put them on the ballot Uh, instead of having say citizen-led initiatives if you recall there was an initiative almost 10 years ago it feels like uh, where they had uh, uh, the issue of allowing for independent redistricting committees uh, to, to individually and independently evaluate uh, the state's planned jurisdiction maps. Uh, so that uh, that measure was a citizen driven effort, a driven effort, got hundreds of thousands of signatures, but ultimately was blocked after a lawsuit by former uh, House Speaker Michael Madigan. It's a it's a long, convoluted story, but there are ways for citizens to get questions on the ballot in Illinois. None of those advanced. Uh, However, the legislature did advance non-binding resolutions on the November ballot. Uh, State Representative Jay Hoffman, a Democrat from Swansea, carried the Senate bill amendment in the House before it passed and laid out what these three non-binding referenda are uh, that voters could be asked. The advisory referendums, as I indicated, would be three. First would be an election worker protection and candidate accountability referendum act. The second, the property tax relief and fairness referendum act. The third, an assisted reproductive health referendum act. So again, three different measures, one dealing with elections, another dealing with uh, you know, reproductive health, and the third dealing with property taxes. Interesting, we've got high property taxes in the state of Illinois. Uh, what exactly that referendum would say, uh, we'll get more clarity on that. But after this was passed in the House mid-May, uh, you've got uh, the Republicans in the House voting present and then walking off the floor in protests. And they held a news conference in the stairs on the first floor at the Capitol. And uh, here is State Representative Ryan Spain, a Republican from Peoria, uh, laying out uh, his criticism of how this process came together and really these questions of uh, are these really beneficial questions for voters? They have all the ability they want to put real questions on the ballot to amend our Constitution. And you can pick what those topics to be should be. We had no transparency what any of these advisory topics got to be. 
I think there are many additional topics worthy of consideration for hearing feedback from voters. And I would certainly do it in a binding way that is meaningful and genuine, whether that is term limits or redistricting reform or challenging the sanctuary state policies that are hurting uh, people throughout the state of Illinois. These are legitimate questions that should be presented to voters in a way that they could understand. Instead, we have these advisory referenda. And Spain saying they don't really service the public at all. Uh, people saying, well, obviously there's high property taxes. Uh, and that's something that, uh, you know, clearly has people, uh, you know, frustrated, and especially in the Chicago suburbs. I've seen stories of people's property taxes skyrocketing recently. Uh, so, you know, the idea of what the property tax resolution would be, I guess we'll see uh, in a moment here. Um, we'll actually read from the legislation. But when it got to the state Senate, Senate President Don Harmon laid out his uh, analysis of the three non-binding referenda that they want to ask voters. The first question relates to election interference. The second would adopt a 3% surcharge on income over a million dollars to provide t property tax relief. And the third would ensure that health insurance policies cover access to in vitro fertilization and other uh, reproductive uh, uh, health care uh, procedures, regardless of the number of treatments. So, again, three measures, one dealing with uh, election security and poll workers and other dealing with uh, property taxes uh, and some kind of what uh, surcharge, he said. Uh, and again, non-binding referenda, uh, but the third would deal with... You know, it's uh, very ironic that... The third would deal with uh, the issue of um, reproductive health care uh, that women can access. Uh, but uh, on the Senate floor, uh, Springfield Republican State Senator Steve McClure, he uh, showed his opposition to this because it wasn't just the non-binding referendum. It was also a measure in this that prevented the slating of candidates uh, who didn't run in the November or didn't run in the March primary to get on the November ballot. Uh, and Republicans saw that as election interference. You know, it's very ironic that a motion that contains a referendum on election interference actually interferes with a pending election. That's what this bill does. So uh, the irony there uh, that uh, Steve McClure is highlighting, uh, frustrating for, for Republicans. And again, that measure about the slating that Republicans said interfered with the election was actually blocked by a Sangamon County District Judge. It's being reviewed by the Illinois Supreme Court. Unlikely that it's actually going to be fully resolved before the election. So the slating of candidates is going to proceed if they sustain, uh, you know, any kind of uh, you know defense against uh, certain objections that have been raised about signature gathering, for instance. Uh, so obviously the ballot has not been uh, completely finished. Uh, it'll be certified in late August. Uh, so we'll be watching that. Uh, but just to look at what the non-binding resolutions could be, if you go to the measure at ILGA.gov, Senate Bill 2412, uh, again, it was a measure that started off as a Department of Children and Family Services uh, welfare goals measure, but it was gutted and replaced with this language and signed by the governor. Uh, so we're going to go and check out where we can find the uh, language for the non-binding referenda. And uh, scrolling down here, we'll get to it here in just moments with uh, uh, some decently long bill here. All right, so here we go. The article uh, may be cited as the Election Worker Protection and Candidate Accountability Referendum Act. And what's the question that could be asked to you, the voter? Should any candidate appearing on the Illinois ballot for federal, state, or local office be subject to civil penalties if the candidate interferes or attempts to interfere with an election worker's official duties? Again, a non-binding question on the ballots, but it's about election security. So that may be something to get people to the polls. Uh, the next non-binding referendum would ask this question. Should the Illinois Constitution be amended to create an additional 3% tax on income greater than $1 million for the purpose of dedicating funds raised to property tax relief? So, uh, you know, we had the question of... Uh, should there be a graduated income tax in the state of Illinois? And that was shot down by voters. This would be a non-binding question about should the Constitution be amended to allow for a 3% surcharge on income over $1 million. 
Uh, so that's uh, interesting to see uh, that question raised. And again, the ballot will be certified late August, and we'll see if this question ultimately makes it, which since the legislature approved it, uh, likely is going to happen. And then you've got the third non-binding question here that uh, the legislature approved. Should all medically appropriate assisted reproductive treatment, including but not limited to in, in vitro fertilization, be covered by any health insurance plan in Illinois that provides coverage for pregnancy benefits without limitation on the number of treatments? So again, uh, another non-binding question that's uh, likely going to be in front of voters uh, this November, uh, but they're just advisory. They're non-binding. Could there have been other binding resolutions like Representative Spain laid out? Term limits, redistricting reform, a whole host of other things I imagine the public could have thought of as well. Uh, so clearly, uh, the Democrat majority at the Illinois legislature laying out their questions that they want to have asked and the Republicans uh, not going along with it, but they're in the super minority. Uh, so their voice really uh, doesn't have as much weight as uh, the Democrats do. All right. It is Illinois in focus daily. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell with America's Talking Network.